Let's document. Join me as we cover breast ultrasound protocols on this edition, Documenting an Abnormal Exam. Let's talk about what to do if you discover pathology while you're scanning. So this would be a abnormal exam. Note that this applies for both the screening breast ultrasound protocol and the targeted breast ultrasound protocol. When pathology is visualized within the breast, you wanna document the location of the pathology. And you would document that by which breast, the clock location, the distance from the nipple, and the transducer orientation. For example, right breast, two o'clock, five centimeters from nipple, anti-radial. For your images, you're going to take a radial image without a measurement, a radial image with two measurements, your length and your height, a radial image with color Doppler, and then you're gonna move to the anti-radial plane. It's going to be an anti-radial image without a measurement, an anti-radial image with one measurement, which is the width, and an anti-radial image with color Doppler. Note that the measuring process is exactly the same as for a lymph node. It doesn't matter if you do two images in radial and one measurement in anti-radial, or two measurements in anti-radial and one measurement in radial. You should follow the protocols of your specific site. What's most important is that you ensure that you're doing the three correct measurements. You need to have a length, which is a horizontal measurement, a height, which is a vertical measurement, and a width, which is a horizontal measurement. Many new sonographers make the mistake of doing a length, a height, and a height, meaning they have two vertical measurements instead of two horizontal ones. So two horizontal measurements, one vertical measurement. That's the most important key. It's also crucial that any pathology in the breast be measured in a radial and an anti-radial scanning plane. If you do these in sagittal and transverse in the breast, you're gonna underestimate your mass size and the most suspicious features of the mass usually will not be visualized. After you've documented your pathology, you want to scan that entire quadrant around the pathology to ensure that you're not visualizing anything else. If there's nothing else visualized in that quadrant, then you wanna take your two negative quadrant images. For example, right breast, upper outer quadrant radial, and right breast, upper outer quadrant anti-radial. And that's demonstrating to the radiologist that you've evaluated the entire quadrant. It's also crucial as you are documenting that pathology to characterize that pathology. And I get a lot of questions about why do I need to characterize the pathology? Isn't that the job of the radiologist? And the answer to that is yes, it is the job of the radiologist and the radiologist will characterize it fully on their report. However, it's essential for a sonographer to characterize that pathology as you're going along because the characteristics of that pathology are gonna tell you what images you need to take as you're doing your exam. So if you are visualizing something that looks suspicious, this means it's got a vertical orientation, it has irregular margins such as speculated or angular margins, possibly it has a thick echogenic halo around it, then I know that I need to take a few extra steps. If I find something suspicious, the first thing I'm going to do is look at that mass and figure out if it's associated with a milk duct. And this may not even be a subareolar mass. I may be out from the nipple quite a distance, but I still wanna see, is there any sort of ductal component to this mass? And I determine that by looking at each end of the mass in a radial plane and determining do I see any parts of milk duct coming off either end of this mass. If I do see that, I wanna pay attention and determine am I dealing with a branch pattern or a duct extension? Is this mass extending towards or away from the nipple? And I do that by looking for the blind end and the pointed end of the mass. That tells me what direction it's going. Is it heading towards the nipple or is it heading away from the nipple? It's really important for radiologists to know if a mass is ductal in origin. This helps them characterize the mass. 
The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the relationship of the mass to the nipple. Does this mass in any way connect to the nipple? So either it would be directly subareolar where I can't tell the difference between where the nipple and the mass is, which means it's connected, or I'm close to the nipple and I can see extensions of this mass, so speculations traveling to the nipple, then I know it's connected to the nipple. The next thing I'm gonna do is determine, is there any relationship of the mass to the pectoralis muscle? This lets a radiologist know, is this mass fixed to the chest wall? I look at the depth of the mass and determine, is it anywhere near the pectoralis muscle? And next, I'm also gonna look at, is there any relationship of this mass to the skin? Is this mass invading the skin? I also need to carefully evaluate that entire quadrant that the pathology is in, or if that pathology is at the kind of edge of a quadrant, I may also evaluate the quadrant next to it, and I'm looking for satellite masses. And the last step is I want to look at the axillary lymph nodes to see if there's any abnormal nodes. You can see that there's a lot of extra steps that I'm taking as a sonographer if I see something that looks suspicious in the breast versus if I see something that looks very benign looking, I wouldn't need to take all these additional steps. I'm tailoring my exam based on how I'm interpreting the characteristics of that mass. Over time, you're gonna get better and better at characterizing masses, and you'll know better what to look for next in your exam. When you're first starting out, however, you're gonna to have to really lean more on your radiologist who will tell you, go look at this and go look at that and go evaluate this. That's where I started out and that's where all sonographers start out. However, as you learn all that over time, you'll be able to do this in the room while you're with the patient so you don't have to continually start and stop the exam. You'll be able to do it all in one session. And all this information is crucial to the radiologist because it helps them learn the features of this particular mass. Interested in more videos on ultrasound? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in for our next video on Wednesdays.